What's going on guys? Temperatures are dropping, winter is coming, and in today's video, I'm going to be prepping the ponds ready for this chilly weather to come. Now, I'm going to be mainly focusing on the DIY above ground mini pond here, but I will also be briefly showing what I'm doing with all of my now four ponds that I have in this little garden. Now, I just want to say before we start, location wise, I am right in the middle of the UK, and it does get pretty cold in the winter, regularly getting below freezing. Some years we get snow, some years we don't. But I just mentioned this because these preparations are obviously done to suit my climate. Also, even though all of my ponds are above ground, they are very well insulated, which is obviously going to make quite a big difference. But whether your pond is in the ground, insulated, not insulated, I've still got plenty of tips and tricks to keep your pond and fish safe this winter. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is to make sure any pumps and air stones are lifted up off the bottom of the ponds. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to continue to run the pumps, filters and air stones over the winter. But what I don't want them doing is creating too much water movement towards the bottom of the pond. This is because we want to allow the stratification of the water, which basically means the water at the bottom of the pond should stay slightly warmer than the water at the top that is closer to the cold winter air. This will allow the fish to overwinter at the bottom of the pond where it is that little bit warmer. Now for me, all of my pumps were already off the ground, so all I need to do is to raise my air stones up a little bit. I also extended the filter outlet so the water returning from the filter to the pond will not be exposed to that cold winter air. Once this was done, I moved on to cutting down the deciduous plants and removed completely any that will not survive the winter, such as the water lettuce and the Amazon frog bit. This will stop them from breaking down and polluting the water over the winter. This will also help make the spring start up in a few months time a lot easier. Once I was sorted with plants, I moved on to the covers. Now, the covers' main job is to protect the pond from wind, as it's the wind whipping over the surface of the water that will really cool down a pond. Also, it is obviously going to prevent rain and snow from falling into the pond and further cooling it down that way. To make these covers, I'm using polycarbonate sheets that I picked up from Wix. I've used these before and they've always worked really well. They aren't cheap though, and I ended up having to buy two sheets at £48 each. Saying that though, the two sheets will be enough to make covers for all four of my ponds and should last for many years to come. Also, any offcuts can be later used to make some DIY aquarium lids. I also made the covers to fit in such a way that it would be easy to remove a good sized part of it on any warmer, sunnier days. Also, to begin with, I will probably only be putting the covers on at night and opening the ponds back up during the day until the weather starts to really drop. One important thing to remember if you are going to be using a cover though is to make sure there are some air gaps as you definitely don't want to completely seal off a pond. So now that the covers are done I'm going to be adding a bit of extra insulation to the pond. I'm going to be doing this in two ways. First thing I'm going to be adding some bubble wrap on top of the polycarbonate sheets and secondly by adding some foam pipe insulation to as much as the pipe work as I can. For the bubble wrap, I used the covers as a template to cut it to the right size. I then just placed it down on top of the polycarbonate sheets and then used a few bricks to hold everything securely in place. Again, it is important to remember if adding bubble wrap to make sure that you don't completely seal off your pond. Once that was done, I grabbed the foam pipe insulation and went about just putting it over any pipe work that I could get to. This is really going to help make sure that the water going through the pipes doesn't freeze, causing the pipe to split and leak once defrosted. This was really quick and easy to do. In most places, it just held itself in place, but anywhere it didn't, I just used a little bit of electrical tape to secure it. I also added some silver bubble wrap left over from my patio pond build to my pre-filter, which will hopefully just stop it from getting too cold. Next up, heaters. Now, I'm hopefully not going to be using any heaters in any of my ponds. In previous years, I have done, but with the current electricity prices, I just don't think that's going to be an option this year. 
Plus, they shouldn't be needed for the fish that I keep, which are goldfish, white cloud mountain minnows, and my docker ice fish, especially with all the insulation and other winter preparations I've done to the ponds. That being said, if we do end up having a crazy harsh winter, I could add them in at a later date. I do think, though, an average winter here, I could probably get away with not doing anything to any of my ponds, and the fish would probably be okay. This would be especially true if the ponds were a bit bigger and deeper, but I do think the few things I have done will hopefully help the fish have a slightly more comfortable winter. That being said though guys, that is going to bring us to the end of this one. If you have enjoyed it or you found it useful, don't forget to hit that like button. If you've got any questions, whack them down in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.